Hello and welcome to my Home Tuitions YouTube channel. In this video, we will be exploring an essential concept in statistics called the normal distributions. This concept helps us understand how data is distributed in many real life situations and we will break it down into simple terms to make it easy for you to grasp. We will also discuss using Casio FX 570EX class which calculated to find the probabilities of normal distributions. This video is sponsored by Casio Malaysia. The normal distributions also known as the Gaussian distributions or the bell curve is a continuous probability distribution that describes how data points are spread around the mean. It has a distinctive bell shape that is symmetrical with fewer data points further away from the mean. There are a few key features of normal distributions that you should know. First, it is symmetrical around the mean, which means that the probabilities of a data points being above or below the mean is the same. Second, the area under the curve represents the probabilities of observing a particular value within the distributions. Third, the total area under the curve is equal to 1, representing 100% of the possible outcomes. Fourth, the mean, median, and mode are all equal in the normal distributions. Now, let's look at an example to help you better understand the concept. Imagine a group of students took a test, and their scores follow a normal distribution with mean of 70 and standard deviations of 10. The standard deviation is a measure of how spread out the data is. In normal distributions, about 68% of the data points fall within a one standard deviation of the mean, 95% within two standard deviations, and 99.7% within the three standard deviation. To calculate probabilities related to normal distributions, we use z-scores. A z-score tells us how many standard deviations a data point is from the mean. The formula for a z-score is z equal to x minus mu over sigma, where z is the z-score, x is the data point, mu is the mean, and sigma is the standard deviation. For example, for the case we discussed just now, where a group of students took a test and their scores follow a normal distribution with a means of 70 and a standard deviation of 10, then let's calculate the z-score for a test score of 85. z equals to x minus mu over sigma, in this case, x equals to 85, mu equals to 70, and sigma equals to 10. Therefore, we substitute these values into the formula, and we found that z equals to 1.5. So a test score of 85 is 1.5 standard deviation above the mean. Let's see this past exam question. This is 2007 paper 1, question 25a. X is a continuous random variable of normal distributions with a mean of 52 and a standard deviations of 10. Find the z-score when x equal to 67.2. So in this case, the mean is equal to 52 and the standard deviation is equal to 10. And we are asked to find the z-score. And just now we know that the z-score is equal to x minus the mean over the standard deviation. And uh, in this case, the x is equal to 67.2. So 67.2 minus the mean 52. And the standard deviations is equal to 10. Therefore, the z-score is equal to, uh, by using the calculators, okay, is equals to 1.52. So this is a z-score. So that's how we find the z-score by using the formula z equals to x minus mean over the standard deviation. Let's see another question. This is uh, paper 2008, paper 1, uh, question 25. The masses of a group of students in the school have a normal distributions with means of 40 kg and the standard deviations of 5 kg. So the mean is equal to 40 kg and the standard deviation equals to 5 kg. Calculate the probability that a student chosen at random from this group has a mass of more than 45 kg. So what they want us to find is the probabilities where x is more than 45 kg. 
uh, to use the normal distribution table or the calculators, we need to convert this to the z score. Eh? So uh, to convert it to z score, x minus 40 over the standard deviation 5. Uh, okay, so we are going to do the same thing for uh, this 45. So 45 minus 40 over 5. Okay, so uh, so. So x minus 40 over 5, this become the z score, and then uh, this one becomes uh, 5 over 5, 1. So to find this, we can use the normal distributions table or use the calculators. Uh, in this video, I'm going to use the calculators, uh, the Casio FX570EX calculator. Uh, so let's bring out the calculators. Uh. So in the calculators, we go to menu and then uh, distributions is uh, mode 7. So we go to 7 and these times we would like to find uh, the normal distribution. So we have a normal PD and normal CD. So we are going to use normal CD, yeah? cumulative distributions. Okay, so let's choose two. And then they ask us what is the lower boundaries and the upper boundaries of this uh, normal cumulative distributions. Uh, the lower boundary, we, we would like to find the probabilities where the z-score more than one. So let's see where is this area in the normal distributions curve. So for a standard normal distributions curve, the center is zero. So one is somewhere around here. So this is one. And uh, we would like to find the area greater than one. So uh, the boundary is from 1 to the positive infinity. Yeah? So therefore, in the calculators, the lower boundary is 1 and the upper boundary is the positive infinity. So the lower boundary we set as 1 and the upper boundary is positive infinity. Uh, in our calculators, we have no infinity, so we are going to use a very big number to represent infinity. For example, uh, we use a 1 times 10 to the power of 99. Okay, so this is a very big number, it's close to infinity. So equal, when we use a z-score here, we already converted the standard deviations to one. Therefore, we don't need to change this. So we press equal for another time and here is the answer. Okay, so the answer is uh, 0 0.1587. So this is equal to 0 0.1587. Let's continue with question B. Uh, we would like to find the probabilities uh, between 35 kg and 47.8 kg. So the probabilities of X between 35 kg and 47.8 kg. Again, we need to convert this to Z score. So this is equal to P 35 minus uh, 40 so this is the mean and then divided by the standard deviations okay uh, this x minus 40 over 5 and then this one 47.8 uh, minus 40 over 5 okay so uh, this is equal to negative 1 and this becomes z score and then uh, this one is equal to 1.5 Six. So we would like to find the probabilities where the z-score is in between negative 1 and 1.56. So from the curve, we know that uh, negative 1 is somewhere around here. And then uh, 1.56 maybe somewhere around here, 1.56. And uh, uh, we would like to find the area in between these two boundaries. The area in between negative 1 and one point. Five, six. Uh, the area is equal to the probabilities. Uh, so let's uh, bring out the calculators. And then uh, we, uh, this times the lower boundary is negative one. So negative one equal. And the upper boundary is 1.56. 1 1.56 equal. Okay, again, so the standard deviation is still one. So the answer is 0 0.78. 1, 9 or 0 0.7820. Yeah? This is equal to 0 0.7820. So this is the answer. The probabilities 
for x in between the 35 and 47.8. So that's how we use the Casio FX570EX calculators to find the probabilities of normal distributions easily by just giving the lower boundaries and the upper boundaries. Okay, this is very useful and is uh, much easier to use compared to the uh, normal distributions table. You have just learned the basics of normal distributions and how to calculate probabilities using Z-score. Understanding the normal distribution is fundamental in statistics and it will help you make sense of data in various real-life situations. Keep practicing and soon you will be a normal distributions pro.